Yes, but it's very, very Hello, I am Jane Hume. I'm a senator from Victoria, a very proud member of the Liberal Party. And tonight we're here at the North East Yarra inaugural uh, women's section function. I think it's a women's council function. It's an incredible crowd here. They've really uh, put an enormous number of people here, both women and men. And I'm really looking forward to addressing the crowd a little later on and telling them about not just the last two very interesting weeks in Canberra, but also what's next on the federal government's agenda. Hi, I'm Richard Stockman. It's uh, wonderful to be here in Heidelberg in this first discussion cocktail event. So I'd like to welcome Senator Jane Hume. Now... Thirtieth of April, <laughs> <laughs> but we won't go into any further details. <laughs> Let's uh, just say that James Patterson's thirtieth uh, birthday is on the same night as my thirty-year school reunion. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, that's a worry. Jane went to Melbourne University. Jane was also a senior policy advisor, Australian Super. But more importantly for us as the women's section, Jane was one of our Dame Elizabeth Couchman uh, scholarship winners uh, for the mentoring program in 2013. And uh, Jane focused on uh, involving more women from the Anglo-Celtic Anglo section background, especially those from non-European heritage. Uh, also too, Jane was uh, also officially entered into the parliament on the 2nd of uh, July in 2016 as our Senator for Victoria and please welcome Jane Hume as our first <laughs> guest speaker. Thank you, Thank you very much. That's an extraordinarily warm welcome. Can I, I, I don't, I can, there's no way I can acknowledge all of those people that were on Jackie's list. But I will acknowledge Jackie and Jenny and Wendy. Thank you so much for organising this evening. You've done a terrific job. And I also want to acknowledge the marvellous staff of, of the Barclay, is it Henry yeah, Barclay Hotel? Yeah. What an extraordinary venue. What a terrific event. They really, yes. I thought the food was lovely. They're, they're very hospitable. So thank you very much to all of them. And I'd also like to acknowledge my soon to be parliamentary colleagues both Manny and Monica. Very nice to have you both here. Thank you. There are lots of other people with very important titles here. I'm bound to miss one, so I won't go through them all. But uh, I am going to start tonight by making a very important confession, and you can say that tonight you have heard it first. Obviously, there's an awful lot of politicians talking about their heritage these days. Um, I, too, have grandparents that were born overseas. Um, Devonport, Tasmania. <laughs> something I need to talk about, it's something I need to confess. Sadly, I am about as multicultural as a meat pie. So you will, um, you, you have to go back to find a convict in my family in order to, you know, find somebody with an immigrant background. Most of the time I apologise for this. In the last two weeks it's actually been a good thing. It has been an extraordinary two weeks in Canberra. Can I tell you, when I got home last Friday, I was absolutely exhausted. So much had gone on between Barnaby and Fiona Nash, and then later, of course, we found out about... Um, about Nick Xenophon, we had the postal plebiscite disaster, there I was sitting in the Senate chamber and all of a sudden the black ghost walks in and plonks down two feet away from me. It was quite an extraordinary couple of weeks. Um, but I suppose what I wanted to talk to you about tonight was not necessarily the antics of what's been going on, because I know how frustrating that is for party members. It is extraordinarily frustrating. Equally, it's frustrating for us because we know what we have achieved in the last 12 months and yet we seem unable to get the clear air to get that message out. And I was thinking about this because I have just hit my one year anniversary. In fact, officially I think my one year anniversary, I know it, officially it's the 2nd of July, the you know, election day. However, I didn't find out I was elected until the 3rd of August because it took so long to count those votes. Uh, so uh, this is in fact, I think this week is my uh, one year anniversary from the 
for my maiden speech. So I feel like I really have only just sort of you know, hit that hurdle myself. Um, and at that time, when I walked into the Senate chamber and I saw that extraordinary crossbench and I read all the editorials, we had Pauline Hanson, we had Jackie Lambie, we had Darren Hinge, David Lionhelm, Corey Bernardi hadn't yet decided to move sides, but he certainly moved pretty quickly after he got back from his jaunt junket to the UN. Um, you know, there were the Greens, there was a hell of a lot more of them then than there are now. Uh, but there was, it was quite an extraordinary rebel. And the naysayers said, this government is, is, is hopeless. It's never going to be able to get anything through the Senate. And yet, one year later, we have actually passed 100, more than 120 pieces of legislation. That's twice as much legislation that was passed in the two years prior. So, but that is not a message that's, that's getting out there. And if you think about what this government has achieved in the face of that extraordinarily difficult Senate, Let's just you know, have a think about some of the policies that have gone through. The tax cuts, every tax cut that was promised in the last election campaign has been passed. We've cut personal income tax rates, we've you know, stopped insidious bracket creep for those on average wages of about $80,000 so they don't fall into the second highest tax bracket. We've passed company tax cuts, even larger than we anticipated originally, and expanded the definition of what a small company is, which is very, very important. And continue this very important uh, is asset write-offs that were so popular with our small business base. We've also made two significant changes to multinational tax avoidance, making sure that those multinational companies like Google and Facebook and Apple and IBM, all of whom I'm facing at Senate, uh, at a Senate inquiry tomorrow actually, uh, are paying their fair share of tax on what they earn in Australia. So that's very significant. The education reform, reforms, the Gonski reforms, I mean, who on earth would have thought that a coalition government could not only make Gonski its own, but you know, reform it in such a way that it is genuine needs-based funding, genuine needs-based funding, as opposed to just a but sort of... But the uh, problem is... Oh, hang on, hang on, don't worry, there's miles of it. <laughs> <laughs> that, Nobody that, believes uh, it. <laughs> but it is, it is genuine needs. Oh, no, no, no. I've got at it. least 20 minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> So Gonski reforms, they are very, very significant and they give schools guaranteed funding for the next 10 years, both uh, independent schools, uh, Catholic schools and, and, uh, and also state schools. Uh, with, um, uh, if you have a look at industrial relations, well, I think this is the really big one and yet we're still not singing it from the rooftops. Mm -hmm. The first thing we did when we got into government was make sure that we protected the CFA. We changed the Fair Work Act to protect our 80,000 volunteers in Victoria, and it was amazing how many people from different states got on board to that incredibly important got change you to the Fed. What's that? The CFA? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I reckon it certainly did in Victoria. And then, uh, but on top of that, the ABCC legislation. Now that's quite incredible. There's not too many governments in the last since Federation that have gone to a double dissolution election and actually passed the legislation. <coughs> excuse me, passed the legislation that they went to that uh, election with. And we passed it, we passed the ABCC legislation and the registered organisations legislation that ensures, and that's one that no one talks about, but that one ensures that unions and employer organisations uh, are governed, um, have the same you know, level of, of, of uh, you know, governance, accountability and responsibility that a listed organisation does. That's very, very significant. So there's just three bits of legislation that I think we should be particularly particularly proud of right now. Now, I, I hear you, I, I, I honestly do, but the line that renewables is cheaper than coal is one that we are going to have to counter. That's coming straight out of the Greens label. And at, at the moment, wind and solar have been subsidised. They've been subsidised with cheap loans and they've been subsidised with subsidies. Uh, whereas coal has had punitive measures placed upon it. Now you remove all of those things, put everything on a level playing field, then assess the, uh, the emissions, and then work out whether they fit into your clean energy target. That's my opinion. Okay. Ladies, uh, Wendy and Jackie will be sending you emails to join the North East Jared. As you can see, we're a vibrant group of daytime and nighttime meetings, and we'd love to have you all on board so that we be can become as big as the Eastern.
Burwood Camberwell and also Knox Rangers. So, so, uh, so please join us. Uh, I'd like to thank two ladies in particular, apart from, firstly, I'd like to thank Jane for coming tonight to be our first guest speaker, so thank you. And then the other two ladies. The other two ladies I'd like to thank is the godmother from the north, Jackie Douglas, thank you. And also Wendy, because both of the two ladies know that um, if, it, if it wasn't that my mother got uh, discharged from ICU today, I would not be here. So I'd like to thank them for, for really putting this together at the last, not the last minute, but the last few details together. And so me from the bottom of my heart, thank you girls. Thank you. Hello, I'm Monica Clark. I am a wrestling